Good morning, Faith family. We're so glad that you're joining us um, this morning. Uh, we hope that you will just stand to your feet and um, focus on God this morning, and uh, let's worship together. tried so hard to see it it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve and you take the them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. And I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I'm seated in the heavens. Undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease. And this is my. Down, 
lift my voice and shout every wall comes breaking down i have the authority jesus has given me and when i open up my mouth miracles come breaking out i have the authority jesus has and shout every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me
Good morning, Faith Assembly family. So glad that you are watching our video on Facebook and YouTube. And if you don't know already, we have transitioned back to in-person services. Don't worry, if you're not ready to go back, we'll continue to put on some great content here on Facebook and YouTube and, uh, and continue to um, encourage you with scripture as well as worship. Um, also, just wanna let you know if you are looking to come back, we are taking all safety precautions to make sure that your family and your friends, your guests are protected as they come and visit Faith Assembly. This morning, uh, we will be uh, continuing the second part of our series on the Sermon on the Mount, and we'll be starting to look at the first four of the Beatitudes. So if you have your Bibles this morning, let's turn to the book of Matthew chapter five, and we'll be reading verse one through six. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Lord Jesus, we just come before you, Lord. Bless this time we have together. And uh, Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us become more and more like your son, Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is probably Jesus' most famous sermon. If you look at the whole uh, Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, you can see some of the most um, critical and uh, very important teachings that Jesus is starting to give to the believers and the hearers that are following him. Um, and today we're going to take a look at the Beatitudes, and we're going to look at the first part of the Beatitudes. And the first one is, Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor here has a meaning of... Um, of begging, of destitute, someone with want. So what Jesus is actually saying to us today is that we are to be poor in spirit, applying to that of the spiritual state of the believer. There has to remain in us a state of spiritual inadequacy, extreme poverty, and the ability, um, and, the, and that we know that we have the ability to commit sin. That those that are poor in spirit um, are, are spiritually bankrupt in a sense that we realize that the only person that can fill this inadequacy is Jesus. And I think for us um, here in America and other first world countries, that, that feeling of inadequacy comes in very rare because we have gifts and talents and means to provide. And when we look at our spiritual state, we must evaluate ourselves and say, you know what, there, I cannot fulfill this need for myself. I can't provide this need for myself. I have to be poor in spirit and recognize that only Jesus can come in and fulfill this need for me. If we can't grasp this first beatitude, there really is no point in us to move forward. We won't be able to accept the ethics, the attitudes, and behavior of the rest of Matthew chapter 5. 
How do we know if we understand it, right? That's the big question. Do you get amazed at God's grace for you? Does God's grace just, just grip you in the sense that you were just marveled at the fact that he was able to come in and rescue you and save you from your sins? Are you aware of your sinfulness? Are you aware of your continual need for God? If you can answer yes to those things, you, you are in a place where you are, uh, you recognize the spiritual inadequacy. You are poor in spirit. Number two, blessed are those who mourn. The second kingdom attitude uh, given by Jesus is for us to be people who mourn. This literally translates at, uh, as us as lamenting over the death of someone. But instead of mourning over the death of someone, Jesus is trying to get his believers and hearers to mourn at the fact that we that this should be applied to our sinfulness, that we should mourn at the fact that that we are, uh, once again, we come to that place of inadequacy, that we mourn that we are sinful people. There should be a sense of mourning when we sin. There should be a sense of repentance when we sin. But the promise here is that Jesus promises to comfort us in our mourning, that when we recognize our sinfulness, that he will be right there by our side to pick us up and continue to walk with us along the way. Number three, blessed are the meek. This simply means um, you know, being friendly, being mild, being pleasant. Most people read this and we think of uh, weakness for some reason, uh, but even Jesus calls himself meek. And if you look in, uh, in the book of Numbers, Moses is referred to as being the meekest man to have ever lived, and neither one of them can be described as weak in everything they did in their lives. We are to be kind, we are to be passionate, uh, but certainly not abrasive in our attitudes. Keeping in this context, we continue to realize that it's only through Christ that we can truly be friendly and mild and pleasant. And look at the promise. The promise tells us that the meat will inherit the earth. You know, I think sometimes, you know, the, the mentality of the world is that those who are powerful are the ones who inherit the earth. But once again, Jesus flips the thinking, flips the script and says, we inherit ultimately by trust and submission to him. Kindness equals inheritance. And lastly, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. This is the solution to our spiritual bankruptcy. The need has already been created with the first three attitudes. And now as believers, we come in desperation to him. You know, most, uh, most Americans probably will never um, fully grasp the understanding of um, hunger and thirsting over a long period of time. Uh, Tony Hall, a former ambassador to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, undertook a three-week fast in order to better understand and bring awareness to that, um, to that hungry experience. And he discovered that the worst of his hunger occurred in the first week of his fast. Later, his body grew ambivalent to food and this suggests that we must regularly expose ourselves to food in order to satisfy that hunger. And I think we can apply that to our spiritual lives. We must regularly feed and, and hunger and thirst after the Lord's righteousness and feed ourselves. Because if we don't, we will become uh, uh, numb and we will no longer uh, want and want to have that hunger and thirst in our own bodies. True hunger and thirst should gnaw at a person and it's an all-consuming passion and a desire for God's righteousness um, as we hunger and thirst for that. The words of Jesus are still speaking to us today from that mount. As we read um, you know, the beginning portion of the Sermon on the Mount, they're calling us, his disciples, to walk in a way that is completely unlike we've ever walked before. You know, we see these teachings and, and you know, a lot of the people that were sitting on that mount that day the only teachings that they had heard had been from the Pharisees and other teachers of the law. And everything that they heard before were, were teachings in order to um, change the outward appearance of how they lived their lives. But Jesus was getting to the heart. Jesus, Jesus was, was, was looking for us, uh, looking for them, for their attitudes to be changed. Jesus was asking them to move beyond the superficial and move to a deeper relationship with him. This morning, I believe that he's asking us to do the same thing. He's asking us 
to put away the facade and acknowledge our need for him. We must be broken by our sin. We must trust and submit to him. When we do that, we will have the kingdom of God. When we do that, we will be comforted by God. When we do those things, we will inherit the earth. I challenge you this week, I challenge you today, look at your life, look at your attitudes, look and see how you're living your life and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart today and teach you how to live out these first four Beatitudes. God bless you guys and may bless you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you, be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless you.